This lecture is basically our kingdom Monera, which is a part of biological classification. In this, we are going to discuss about Archaebacteria, Eubacteria, and Mycoplasma. You are quite well known with the kingdom Monera, in which we will be studying about bacteria, because kingdom Monera includes only the bacterial species. Here, the classification of Monera based on the mode of nutrition. Monera is classified under two categories. One is eubacteria, which is also called as true bacteria. And the second one is archaebacteria. Eubacteria, in turn, is classified under two categories. One is heterotrophic bacteria and other one is autotrophic bacteria. Heterotrophic bacteria is classified under the mode of nutrition. For example, chemoautotroph and photoautotroph. When they can synthesize their food with use of certain chemical substances, you call it as chemoautotrophs. Sulfur bacteria belongs to chemoautotroph. When you talk about photoautotrophs, as you all know, photo means light. That means the autotrophs with the bacteria which can synthesize its own food in the presence of light, it's called as photoautotroph. Example is a blue-green algae or cyanobacteria. Next is about archaebacteria. Archaebacteria is classified under three categories based on its habitat. One is halophiles, which survive in the salty areas. The other one is the thermoacidophiles, in which the temperature is quite high, in which you will find it in the hot springs. And the third one is methanogens, in which there is a liberation or the release of methane gas, seen in marshy areas. Next, let's talk about archaebacteria, which is the first type of bacteria, which is present under the category of the kingdom Monera. Now, features or characteristic features of archaebacteria, the type of organism which comes under archaebacteria is they are unicellular in nature, they are prokaryotes and the survival or the habitat is an extreme environment. Where other organisms cannot survive or other bacteria cannot survive, there this archaebacteria will survive. The peptidoglycan layer in the cell wall is absent in case of archaebacteria. The mode of reproduction is asexual through binary fission. The nutritional mode is by heterotrophic or by autotrophic condition. Next, let's discuss some of the features of archaebacteria. Archaebacteria, they can survive in the areas without oxygen. That is, they can grow under anaerobic condition. Extremophilic conditions, you call it as extremophiles because they can thrive or they can survive under extreme conditions. They are very similar to bacteria and they are prokaryotic in nature. They are unicellular, that is single cell, without nucleus since they are prokaryotic in, in nature and that is what we call nucleoid. There is no membrane bound organelles like mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, etc. which you can find in eukaryotic cell. They can navigate or they can move or you can say their locomotory organ is one or more flagella. Next is Archaebacteria is one of the oldest microorganisms surviving on the earth. They are the unicellular prokaryotes. They are without the cell nucleus and without any organelles. They belong to the kingdom Archae. They were first discovered in the year 1977 by Carl Woos and George E. Fox. And they classified Archae into the category of bacteria. Most of the Archaebacteria, they appear like bacteria when they are observed under compound microscope. However, they are quite different from bacteria as well as the eukaryotes. The main difference is absence of peptidoglycan layer of the cell wall, which is exclusively present in bacteria. And if you compare with the difference between the eukaryotes and the archaebacteria, in eukaryotes, you will find well-defined nucleus, presence of the membrane-bound organelles, etc. Archaebacteria, they can survive in the harsh conditions, such as volcanic vents or at the bottom of the sea where other organisms cannot survive. They can easily survive in such extreme environment at the same time at sea vents releasing sulfide rich gases, hot spring, boiling mud around volcanoes, etc. They are classified under three conditions, under, under three states like it depends upon the habitat where they survive. Methanogens, these are the methane makers. They are seen in swamps sewage, mud and animal guts. They make ATP anaerobically liberating or converting CO2 to methane that is CH4. 
The next is halophiles. These are the salt lovers. That is, they survive in extreme salty areas, such as brackish water, salt lakes, hydrothermal, and the seafloor wells. The third type of archaeobacteria is the extreme thermophile. They are the heat lovers. That is, they survive in extreme temperature, in high temperature, such as acidic soil, hot springs, coal mines, hydrothermal wells. Next, let's talk about eubacteria. Eubacteria is also called as true bacteria. They are prokaryotic organism. That means they lack the cell uh, nucleus. At the same time, you will encounter eubacteria very commonly in the human daily life as you compare with the archaeobacteria. Eubacteria can be found almost everywhere. That is, it is omnipresent. They also serve as antibiotic producers as well as food digesters in our stomach. Eubacteria can be used to produce many of the drugs, wine and such as milk products such as cheese. Eubacteria also called just the bacteria, which is one of the three main domain of the life along with the archaea and eukarya. Eubacteria, they are prokaryotic in nature. They do not have any well-defined nucleus, neither they have any membrane-bound organelles. Eubacteria, they are responsible for many human diseases but also help to maintain the health and form vital parts of the life of the earth, so on the earth for survival. Next, on the basis of mode of nutrition, eubacteria is classified under two categories. One is autotroph, another one is heterotroph. Autotroph in turn is divided into two categories. One is photosynthetic, second one is chemosynthetic. If you talk about photosynthetic, the main examples are blue gleam, algae, which is called cyanobacteria, you have nostoc and anabina. In the chemosynthetic, you have vestimentifera as well as calyptogena. Next, eubacteria, the main example is cyanobacteria, which is also called as the blue-green algae, which has survived on the earth over 3 billion years ago. It is involved in photosynthesis, that means it produces oxygen. At the same time, more the amount of eubacteria, more photosynthesis and more oxygen will be produced. This will help the oxygen rate to be more or to be increased for the oxygen breathers to survive on this earth. Next, let's talk about an example of eubacteria, which is cyanobacteria, which is also called as blue-green algae. They are photosynthetic in nature and they contain a pigment responsible for photosynthesis called as chlorophyll. Habitat, they are found in ocean as well as on the land. They have thick cell wall and without any flagella. They are commonly called as blue-green algae. They are considered as one of the ancestors of the present-day chloroplast. They grow in groups or clusters or colonies. Since they show presence of chlorophyll, they can manufacture their own food and they are autotrophic in nature and they do this by photosynthesis. Let's talk about some of the uh, what do you say, the useful or the important importance of bacteria. As you all know, bacteria, they are always harmful, but it's not the case. Some of the bacteria, they are even beneficial to the human beings. At the same time, some are harmful as well, causing various diseases. First of all, let's talk about the beneficial effects of or beneficial aspects of bacteria. First, let's take talk about the agricultural role of bacteria in increasing the soil fertility. Nitrogen is one of the essential component of many biological organic molecules like protein, nucleic acid, vitamins, coenzymes, alkaloids, etc. Certain bacteria help in the fixation of nitrogen, ammonification, nitrification. This increases the soil fertility. Now, here you can see a diagram showing you the filamentous structure, blue-green algae, example, nostoc. Here you can see that the fixation of nitrogen or atmospheric nitrogen is fixed by this bacteria called as blue-green algae, example is nostoc, by means of a specialized cell. The specialized cell is called as heterocyst. So, heterocyst is a part where the nitrogen fixation takes place in the bacteria such as blue-green algae. Next, the role of bacteria in food production. If you talk about the dairy products like curd, batter and cheese as well as yogurt, various bacteria are involved in the formation of these 
milk products milk is inoculated with a starter culture starter culture means it's a microorganism such as bacteria so milk is inoculated with a bacteria and it is allowed to stand for or keep it for a few hours which are those bacteria which are involved in this inoculation those are the lactic acid bacteria like lactobacillus casei then lactobacillus acidophilus then lactobacillus lactis the lactococcus cremoris then leuconose stock etc this grow in milk and ferment the lactose sugar in the milk and form lactic acid this results in the coagulation of the milk protein which you call casein and finally there is a formation of curd which you call curdling of milk these bacteria are also used in the formation of butter cheese etc next is the production of yogurt the main starter or the main bacterial culture for the formation of yogurt are the lactobacillus bulgaricus and streptococcus thermophilus now when you talk about bacteria in the production of antibiotics antibiotics like bacitracin and polymyxin are produced by bacillus species antibiotics like streptomycin tetracycline erythromycin rifampicin they are produced from the bacteria like streptomyces species production of butanol and propionic acid industrial products like butanol are by are produced by fermentation using certain bacteria called as clostridium acetobutylicum there are formation of propionic acid by the same fermentation process using some other bacterial species called as propionobacterium species bacteria for the production of medically useful enzymes there are certain enzymes called as streptokinase which is involved in as a thrombolytic enzyme which is used to dissolve the blood clot this streptokinase is produced by a bacteria streptococci bacteria the examples are streptococcus mutans streptococcus faecalis streptococcus uberis etc next the role of bacteria in bio remediation the disposal of the sewage and the agro waste there are some bacteria called as cefarotilus natans they are involved in degradation of organic matter in the sewage and the agro waste bacteria are used for pesticide degradation endosulfane is a major component of the pesticide so bacteria they are helpful in way of degrading this endosulfane which are those bacteria klebsiella acinetobacter alkali gins flavobacterium bacillus subtilis next there are certain bacteria which are involved in degradation of oil or oil degrading microorganisms like pseudomonas then merinobacter acinetobacter a famous indian american microbiologist named ananda mohan chakrabarti he developed a genetically engineered superbug called as pseudomonas putida it was capable of degrading petroleum he got a patent for this particular work which was granted by granted by in usa the superbug is a multi plasmid hydrocarbon degrading pseudomonas multi plasmid means it contains genes from plasmids of four different species of bacteria so it helped in degrading the oil or it it contains a bacteria which eats up the oil its multiple plasmid contain genes which governs the degradation of different hydrocarbons like camphor xylene octane hexane naphthalene toluene etc it can degrade simultaneously a number of hydrocarbons of petroleum it can digest about 2/3 of the hydrocarbons that would be found in the oil spill that would kill the aquatic life bacterium can also be used as a biocontrol agent for example bacillus thuringiensis is used as a biocontrol agent instead of using the chemicals as insecticide and pesticide next agrobacterium mediated gene transfer technique the soil bacterium like agrobacterium tumefaciens they are known as a plant genetic engineer they are used to produce many genetically modified plants by using biotechnological skills production of biogas several bacteria are involved in the production of biogas 
especially methane which is used as a biofuel involving certain substrates like cow dung, animal waste etc and some other biodegradable waste. Next is retting of fibers. Retting of fibers includes separation of fibers using certain bacteria like Clostridium butylicum from the main stem of the plant. So whatever you get at the end is the durable and stable fibers separated from the stem and that is done by the bacteria which eats up the pectin of the cell. And for this the bacteria Clostridium butylicum is used. Leather industry, tannery. In leather industry, removal of the hairs, fats, other tissues from the raw hide or the raw uh, skin of the of the animal is used by using bacteria. Next, it's a bi biodegradable plastics. Poly beta hydroxy butyrate. It's a type of reserve food in certain bacteria. This is used for the production of biodegradable plastic. Now the use of bacteria in genetics or genetically engineered, genetic, genetic engineering. Genetically engineered E. coli is a bacteria used in the production of human insulin. Example, humulin to treat diabetes and human growth hormones. Somatotropin is used to treat dwarfism. Then production of biofuel is also done using E. coli, for example, bioethanol. Next, genetically engineered bacterium for the production of vitamins, example, propionobacterium frudendrinki for the production of vitamin B12. Genetically engineered pseudomonas putida, which is a superbug, is used for killing of or destroying the cleaning or the cleaning of the oil spits. Next, Gynococcus radiodurans is another genetically engineered bacterium which is used as a bioremediator to degrade toluene and mercury from highly radioactive nuclear waste. Bt crops. Bt crops, it's a bacillus thuringiensis bacteria which shows presence of a cry gene or Bt gene. This gene is transferred to the crop plants by recombinant DNA technology to form Bt crops. Bt crops, for example, Bt cotton, Bt corn, Bt brinjal, etc., which are resistant to the insects of specific groups like Lepidoptera, butterfly, moth, etc., comes under the category of Lepidoptera. Then you have Diptera, under which you have mosquitoes, housefly, etc. Next is let's see all about the harmful effects of bacteria. First one is a reduction of soil fertility by denitrifying bacteria. Denitrifying bacteria like Thiobacillus dendrificans, Micrococcus dendrificans, they all convert the nitrates of the soil into free nitrogen of the atmosphere and thus they reduce the fertility of the soil. There are some bacteria which causes the plant diseases such as blight disease of paddy. Parasitic bacteria and par pathogens that cause various diseases in plants and animals including human. For example, blight disease of paddy caused by Xanthomonas aureusi. Next, in citrus fruits, there is a disease caused by a bacteria called Xanthomonas exonopodes is causing citrus canker. Next is bacteria causing diseases in human beings such as diphtheria causes cause caused by Corinibacterium diphtheria. Then cholera is caused by Vibrio cholerae. Then pneumonia is caused by Streptococcus pneumoniae. Then you have the bacteria causing food spoilage. Food spoilage is an undesirable change or which, is, which takes place in the food. Spoilage causes changes in the appearance of the food then formation of unpleasant smell or odor or the formation of unpalatable taste. A large number of bacteria cause spoilage of vegetables and fruits such as Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, Bacillus, etc. The cereals are also attacked by some of the bacteria like Micrococcus, Bacillus, Pseudomonas, etc. Meat are attacked by some bacteria like Bacillus, Clostridium, E. coli, Pseudomonas, etc. Egg is attacked by Salmonella, Micrococcus, Pseudomonas. Now the thing that we are eating up should be placed in a proper hygienic condition. You have to maintain the temperature so that this bacteria do not survive on the eatables. 
Next, in poultry, they are attacked by bacillus, enterobacter, E. coli, salmonella, etc. In which we are seeing the bird flu, now it has been spread like anything. Fish, alkaligens, micrococus, pseudomonas, all these are the bacteria which infects the fish. Then the processed foods are infected by bacillus subtilis, bacillus lichaniformis, etc. Bacteria also causes food poisoning. For example, botulism. There is an anaerobic bacterium called as Clostridium botulinum. It produces a neurotoxin botulin, which is an exotoxin. This produces poisoning called as botulism. Next, salmonolysis. This is caused by a bacteria called Salmonella. It is associated with eggs, meat and poultry. Next, bacteria is used in bio-war as well as bioterrorism. The improved variety of infective agents as a bioweapon are widely used as an agent for the effective weapon of bioterrorism. For example, bacteria bacillus anthracis, it causes anthrax. Then bacteria clostridium botulin, it causes botulism. Next, talk about the reproduction of bacteria, eubacteria. It reproduces asexually using binary fission. In binary fission, what happens over here is, first the cell grows and then the chromosome, it duplicates inside the cell. And then again, there is increase in the size of the cell. That means the cell grows again. The cell later divides into two daughter cells, which shows the same genetic material as compared to the parent cell. This is what is first mode of sexual or sexual reproduction in eubacteria. Now, the second stage, you call it as the conjugation. In this conjugation, the two bacteria, they are attached by means of pili. A copy of the plasmid passes from one eubacteria to the another. This type of reproduction in eubacteria is called as conjugation. Now, let's see some of the differences and similarities between archaebacteria and eubacteria. In eubacteria, a peptidoglycanic layer in cell wall is present because they are a true bacteria. They cannot survive in extreme environments. And examples are the cyanobacteria or the blue-green algae. Archaebacteria, they don't have any peptidoglycan layer in the cell wall. They can survive in the extreme climatic conditions. They show based on these extreme conditions, based they are been classified under three categories. One is thermophile, second one is halophile, third one is methanogen. Now let's talk about some of the similarities between eubacteria and archaebacteria. They are both prokaryotic in nature. That's the reason why they are without nucleus. They are unicellular organisms. They show presence of ribosome, but they lack membrane-bound organelles. Let's talk about mycoplasma. Mycoplasma, it again comes under the category of Kingdom Monera. It is commonly called as pleuromenomonia. You call it as pleuronemonia. First organism to be recognized as responsible for highly contagious diseases of cattle known as bovine pleuronemonia. It was first reported as a causative agent by Doi et al. Ischel et al. in the year 1967. And it was a causative agent of many plant diseases such as aster, yellows, potato, witches, broom, and dwarf diesel mulberry. It refers to the genus of bacteria. It lacks the cell wall. It is without a cell wall. And they are unaffected by many common antibiotics. Or you can say it shows resistance to many antibiotics such as penicillin or other beta-lactam antibiotics that target the cell wall synthesis. They can be parasitic or saprophytic in nature. Mycoplasma are also called as cray, crabgrass of sea cultures. The contamination of the cell cultures by mycoplasma, they, are, they contaminate the cell culture and they cause various problems in the research laboratories and in biotechnological industries where the cell cultures or in a microbiological lab where the cell cultures are used. They infect particularly the serum or they infect the flora of the technician's mouth spread by the droplet infection. What is the history of the mycoplasma? It is derived from the Greek word mycos means fungus, plasma means formed. Mycos, fungus-like form of branching filaments, 
plasma is denoting plasticity of the shape. It was first used by Albert Bernhard Frank in 1889. He thought it was a fungus due to fungus-like features. The older name of mycoplasma is called as PPLO, pleuronemonia-like organism. Referring to the organisms which are similar to the causative agent of contagious bovine pleuronemonia, it was later found that the fungus-like growth pattern of mycoplasma mycoids is unique to that species. That's all for the today's lecture. Next, I'm going to continue about the next kingdom after Monera. Thank you.